Yes, yes, yes. We on, we on. We just fives in here. This is Yadin, Ross Iadonis, Tafari here with Ross Seymour Liberd right here. And I and I are just fives in. Yeah, man, let's, let's just keep the vibes going. On this one here, concerning why there's no fear. No fear of, as it's written, you know, within the King, King James Bible, from low degrees to high degrees, why there's no fear of God. There's no fear of the Lord. Why? It's like the wicked have no fear. Brother brought this reasoning to I, and I and I have been just vibes on it. But come forward, my brother. Come forward. Greet the people. And yes, I. Rastafari. <laughs> yes, blessings and greeting everyone. Rastimo here on Just Vibes In. Want to greet and bless everyone in the name of His Majesty Xavier Karamawe. Highly, Salasia. I salute you when I say Ja. Rastafari. Yes, people. Yes, people. We just hear vibes in. You know, we come to the Virgin and we're looking at what's going on in the world today. And not only just today, you know, but throughout history, if you're a historian and you study history and you study the things that has been going on in the world for a very long time and then see what leading up to the day and see what prophecy has been fulfilled and how men are behaving in the world today. And, you know, the wickedness and the evil that's perverse in our world today, you know, we see it on a day-to-day -day basis on big and small levels, you know, whether it's government or whether it's, you know, local within the society amongst the people, them, you know, we seem to have reached a point where it seems like there's no fear, you know, for the Lord anymore, you know, no fear for the Most High because, you know, people look in the mirror and can't see, you know, divinity within themselves, you know, they can't see that godliness within themselves. So if they can't see that within themselves, they can definitely see it within you. If they can't see it in themselves and they can't see it within you, they mean they don't see it at all. So this is a thing that we have to kind of pay attention to that I've been kind of vibes in on myself because there are a lot of things happening and we're seeing these things. We know certain prophecies have to be fulfilled. And, you know, we look and see certain scriptures speak about certain things that we see come to, you know, you know, come to fruition and things that are happening right now in this world that we live in. And, you know, so we look around the wall and we see bombings here, child molestation here, murder over here. You know, it's a whole heap of wickedness going on on the earth. And this is every single day this is going on. There's no pause in this thing. You know, a reporter asked Bob Mali one time why he don't take vacation and give him a beautiful answer. But Mali said, evil do not take a vacation, so I can't take one either. Evil don't sleep. Mm. And the good people don't have to take a rest because they're tired. Mm, mm. You know, so this thing about this fear of the Lord thing is a very serious thing. You know, why do men not fear the Lord anymore? You know, what is really going on in the face of the earth? You know, how can we get back to people fearing the Lord and understanding what this reverence is that we have, that the remnant of us have for our Most High, you know, for our Lord and Savior, you know, for what? more and better for why Xavier, you know, for he who be who he be, the I am I am. Mm, 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 mm. How do we get this fear back? You know, how do we get back on our knees and say, please forgive us. We repent. Mm. And show that true fear. You know, even the fear that the first man Adam had because he himself had a fear because when the Lord came he hid he hid he, he was afraid of the Lord that's why he hid himself mm. Mm. but we no longer hide mm. when we do wrong we do wrong and boast and stand up proud about it mm. you know we see you turn on the TV and you see people doing evil stuff on camera and we know everywhere we go outside of our house, we're going to be recorded some way, somehow. And people still do these things in broad daylight. So the reason I had to bring to Rasaya Dennis 
you know, is <laughs> why do people not fear the Lord anymore? Why it seems like almost no one fears the Lord anymore? You know, look at these these so-called theologians, these pastors out here, who people have been revering for such a long time. <laughs> and then the spotlight shine on them. And you realize these people didn't fear the Lord. They was using him for their own personal gains. And this has been going on for a long time with a lot of these people. They use the Lord for their own personal gain. He's like he's a bank account for them. Mm. So this is no fear. So some of these people you think that might fear the Lord, they don't fear him, they're using him for their gain. The ones who fear the Lord, they feed the flock. They're good food, not the processed food. You know, so this is where this reasoning coming from tonight, you know. It's mm. from these depths right here that these reasoning coming from. This is nothing that man just pop out a blue air, out a thin air and thing. These are things man meditate on and reason about. You know, we're reasoning on this before we even start to recall, we're reasoning on this. You know, so, my lad. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I really give a good a good overview of the context of the reasoning, you know, concerning why they, why men don't fear the Lord, why men don't, men don't fear the Almighty, the Creator, the Life Giver, the Sustainer, why, you know, and let's go to the scripts, you know, because there's, um, I was just scrolling through some of the word picks, but let's begin well, let off. Let me start with David, let me start with King David, man. <laughs> King David. <laughs> with King David. <laughs> Psalms, Psalms 14 and 1. Mm -hmm. They can go to 15 and 1 because 14 and 1 and 15 and 1, they, they go together. Okay, okay. So let me bring that up. Psalm 14. Yeah, 14 and 1. So we're going to begin with, let's, let's just put this up here for a moment. Because we was going to get into some of the... We'll get into the word right there. I'll leave this as a screensaver right here. Some of the Hebrew. Let me bring up the... My sword. Let's get my sword. Everybody get your sword. Grab your pen and paper. You know, the sacred scripture. B-I-B-L-E. And that's the one that talks about the fool, right? That's right. Okay, the fool. Let me put the fool keywords here. Keywords here. The fool and heart the fool and heart so here we are at psalm 14 psalm 14 okay here we go psalm 14 14 and 1 to chief musician a psalm of david the fool have said in his heart there is no god there is no ain elohim they are corrupt they have done abominable works there is none that doeth good. Continue. Mm. Yes. No, no, we just stop right there. Okay, that's not right there, yeah. Now what's interesting we about this is not a precedent of who some of these people is. Well who who these people is because and and, and 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 just to share this with the people right here as one as can see on the video version of this, Psalm fourteen and one is the earlier psalm that has a later psalm. 53 and 1 just to point it out that this psalm was so important that there is like a it's almost like a tune like like, like, like a tune that gets redone it's the same tune so in psalm 53 and 1 if you just go right there you know there's some slight change of language when you study in the hebrew but here it says to the chief musician upon mahalat mahalat interesting word right here mahalat Right, Mahalat. Some say the word means sickness. But to the chief musician upon Mahalat, a maskil, a psalm of David, the fool have said in his heart, there is no God, Ain Elohim. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. So if we can compare with the JV, these two first verses, in, in these two psalms that basically have the same theme concerning the fool. 
So fourteen and one, if you if you have that already right there. Yeah, fourteen and one. JW, the foolish one say in his heart, there is no Jehovah. Their actions are corrupt, and their dealings are detestable. No one is doing good. Mm. Fifty-three and one. The foolish one, um, the foolish one, say in their heart, there is no Jehovah. Their unrighteous actions are corrupt and detestable. No one is doing good. Mm. Now the key thing right here is, and we study this psalm when we go through the Royal Order Psalms. The word "fool" in Hebrew is "nabal," "nabal." It's an interesting story for 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 the fellow disciples to look into. In David, I think it's in Samuel, there was a man named Nabal, and he was like a rich man. He had a wife, he had cattle, everything. David was on the run from Saul because of rumors and slander. And, and you know, David was being set up to be killed. He's, a, he's anointed and Saul is anointed. So you have like Christ, Christian versus Christian in a Hebrew sense. They're both messiahs. So David's on the run and his men were guarding like the sheepfold and, and some of the herdsmen. You know, while they was up in the mountains and in the country and everything. And they got hungry. So they knew Nabal was this man whose, whose herdsmen they saw in the mountain. They could have like taken, you know, cattle or, or sheep or whatever, you know what I mean, to eat. But they were getting very hungry. So what they did is that David sent a man to like, you know, ask Nabal for, you know, share a little food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we was up in the mountain and we guarded your herdsmen and everything and we didn't we didn't do them no wrong We didn't snatch nothing from them or you know take it, you know And so when he sent the message to Nabal, Nabal started to like 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 um, slander insult curse David and everything, you know and When David found out about that he was gonna go back and he, he was ready to like, you know, like kill everything you know, in fact, that's where the saying comes from, even in Rastafari, that even the dog that piss against the wall yeah. would not escape the, the judgment, so to speak. Yeah. But what happened is that his wife, Abigail, she was a wise, said to be a wise woman. She knew her husband was Nabal. The name Nabal actually means fool, but it doesn't mean fool in the sense of like an intellectual fool. It means a fool in the sense of a moral fool. One who's like foolish morally. They could be intellectual. They could be wise. They could be clever and everything else. But when you measure them to righteousness, they are foolish. Anyway, she heard about this and she knew about David. She was hearing about David. So she sent, she had her servants um, um, make a lot of food and everything. And she saddled like the, the asses or donkeys and she went to meet him. And she caught David just when his men were like, you know, getting their weapons and everything ready. They was about to go visit Nabal after Nabal cursed out David, who is your father? The worst thing to say, even in Ethiopia, is to ask somebody who is their father. Why? Because most people, even in Ethiopia, like in the Bible, right, in the ancient days, their last name would be their father's last name. So to say like, who is your father? What is your father? is like an insult. You know what I mean? So anyway, Abigail meets him and basically to sum it up, Abigail spears David the murder that he was, you know, <laughs> he was about to do in that in that hot anger. And she brings David and his men a whole bunch of food. You know what I mean? And what's interesting is that she goes back to her husband and her husband's having a feast. One man by himself having a feast. So she like walks in after she delivered the food to David and she sees her foolish husband having a feast there, you know, and probably still talking about David. That night she didn't say nothing to him. Then the Bible says that Yahuwah um, 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 hit him. He caught a stroke. You know what I mean? And he lingered. He didn't die immediately. He lingered for almost a week. And. Abigail became David's wife, one of David's two wives in, in David's early days. Anyway, <laughs> so watch that fool <laughs> and that foolishness. Why, why I mention that is because when you read it in the English, you'll see the word fool. 
but then the word is Nabal. So if you were to read it as a Hebrew, when we read the Nabal have said in his heart, we immediately think, well, this is a Psalm of David. Didn't David have an encounter with some guy named Nabal? And that name means fool. It's the same word. <laughs> and then we read the story there. You know what I mean? So basically what we, in our studies, we call this study of, of Psalm 14 and Psalm 53, the foolish man versus the wise woman. Because it was how Abigail saved David from bloodshed. You know, because she basically heard how her husband had insulted this righteous anointed man who people probably thought would probably be a king or a great man. And you know what I mean? Even though he's going through a difficult day right here, don't do that. So she went and gave him food and, her, and his men food, right, and returned. Didn't tell her husband until the next day when she told her husband, it says Jehovah gave him a stroke. You know what I mean? He lingered for a while. He died. And then she becomes David's, um, I think, second wife. Just a kind of an interesting, you know, just how life is. But, but, but make me go on. <laughs> I, wanna, um, I want to go some place that we probably went to when we were doing the, the other um, podcast. I want to go to Deuteronomy 12 and 12. Um, do not listen to me, Deuteronomy 10. 12 and 13, Deuteronomy 10, 12 and 13. Deuteronomy 10, chapter 10, verses 12 and 12, 13. Yeah, 12 and 13. Okay, let me get this verse right here. Um, chapter 10, um, 12 and 13. Okay, here we go. Israel require. Israel require. Quiet. Here we go. Here we go right here. Uh, chapter 10, verse 12. Yeah, and 13. 12 okay, 12, Deuteronomy 10, chapter 10, verse 12. And now, Yisrael, what does Yahuwah Eloheka, what does Jehovah thy Elohim require of thee? But to fear Yahuwah Eloheka, he who be, who be thy almighty power, to walk in all his ways. And to love him and to serve Yahweh Loheka, he who be who be thy almighty power, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes that I command thee this day for thy good. Yes, I. Uh, JW. Know who is real. What is Jehovah your God asking of you? Only this to fear Jehovah your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve Jehovah your God with all your heart and all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of Jehovah that I am commanding you today for your own good. That's the key word right there for your good. For your own good. For your own good. Because yeah. all these people who run around who don't fear the most high, they ain't doing nothing for their own good. They think they're doing for their own good, but it's the destruction they do, they do that they're doing things of. It's leading to the destruction, is what that is. And just to show the people right here. You might have a chance to touch on it. The Hebrew word, the root word for fear in the Hebrew, the fear of Yahweh is Yare. That's the root word, Yare, 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 which like to fear has a sense of like to, to revere, you know, to be like an awe. So it has a sense of reverence. Even we can say respect. So sometimes when we, we read it, we'll try to read the, the Hebrew sense, like to reverence, to respect. One of the best definitions of uh, fear that I've read was in the Schofield Study Bible in Psalm 19, where it says, fear of Yahuwah is a uh, reverential trust of him and coupled with a hatred of evil. In other words, a kind of repulsion of what he who be who he be, I and I almighty power regards to be evil. 
You know what I mean? So it, just to bring out the sense of there's few different words in Hebrew for fear. And if we have time here or elsewhere, we'll touch on it. But just to share that right there, the sense of it is like morally to revere. In a moral sense, you like reverence, have a respect, you know, of, you know, he who be who he be like. Yeah, because I trust him. I know this is the evil, and even if I have an inclination to, I'm going to work on myself not to do that. Because, you know, I... I I, I, I would I, 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 I would be uh, not just a shame, but it's like we was talking about this about the word reverence and fear, you know, because some people say that perfect love casts out all fear, but in the Hebrew sense, that word fear really is terror. It's a whole different word, but the fear of Yahuwah, the fear of Jehovah, is the Hebrew sense of true spirituality or one might say true religion having a reverence a, a respect you know some things you'll do but you won't do in front of say someone you respect and if he who be who he be is here there everywhere you know what i'm saying <laughs> you, you know what i'm saying that's why it goes on to say to walk in all his ways that's the way we demonstrate that we reverence him. We walk in his ways and we learn his ways so we can walk in it. And to love him. And to love him. And to serve Yahuwah, right? Our almighty power with what it says, all of our heart. All of our heart. The heart is the center of anything. That's the Hebrew sense. Like the heart of the sea. The sea doesn't have a physical heart, but it's the center of it. So in, in our center. And with all our soul, that means our feeling, our emotion, our psychology, <laughs> to keep the commandments of Yahuwah, to keep them, to, to guard them, right? And his statutes that I command thee this day for thy own good. See, that, that, that's the key right there, for thy own good. So we'll notice that as there's less r r fear of Jehovah, there's fear of the true good, the true God will notice how things are getting worse. Just to worse, point that yes. out. You know, even though we had counterfeit religious stuff going on before, but because there was a sense, there was, I can't say, there was a sense that reverence is something that you respect, fear is something that you do. You know what I mean? Because they cast that out of society. Right? And people are free. <laughs> You know what I mean? To be fools. Like the old saying, free to be fools. Right? Talking about freedom. Yeah, they're free to dumb. You know? And, and what you said, Brother Vaughn Benjamin said, he said, free to do like all these things. Yeah, you know, you are freedom, you know, free to dumb, free to do all the, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the evilness of your heart, you know, to get away with what you feel you are entitled to do, you know, which is a lot of things that is not pleasing to this, you know, the sight of the most high. So, this freedom thing is basically a trap that we have fell into feeling that in this Western society that I am free to do what I want to do. And that is freedom. Well, what you are feel that is your right to be free to do is not pleasing in the, the eyes of the most high. So how is that beneficial to you? How is that for your good? Bro, I got a verse here. I know that I had some verses, but because you say that right there, I got one verse here on that whole idea of freedom and what you just said, 2 Peter 2.19, because that's what happened to the people over the past 60 plus years, especially here in the Americas, in the Western world especially, and I'm pointing mainly to the once lost now found black and brown people, Keely, because one time they were like a moral barometer for America and the world. I mean, you can look this up in history. You know what I mean? Like when black people so-called became Christians or were in the Christian faith, even white folks testified that they were truly more Christian than were living out what the Bible has. You know what I mean? Than the people who were doing things against Christ, anti-Christ, and walking around with the Bible and enslaving the children of Israel. Second Peter 2.19 says, while they promised them liberty, this word liberty, right is actually the word freedom 
I'm showing the people on the screen on the screen right now. If you look up the word in Strong's Concordance, the Greek word, it's actually the word freedom. So the translator uses the term liberty. But this is where we find this kind of freedom that the brother is talking about, right? This freedom, right? While they promise them f liberty or freedom, they themselves are servants of corruption. What was the first psalm that I said start out with Psalm 14, right? The one the first reading. It was talking about the fool saying his heart and, and how are they? They are corrupt. Yes. Corrupt are they? Corrupt. So there are people who have promised people in this modern world flesh satanic system of things, they promise them liberty, which is really freedom. As all these freedoms we see, freedom, all kind of freedoms, they themselves, the people who promise them this, are the servants of corruption because they say there is no God. And notice a lot of the freedoms are actually 180 degree against, you know, the scripture, the Bible, you know, and the logic, you know, of what is right. For of whom a man is overcome, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. That's why Revelation says that Babylon is a cage of every filthy and foul spirit. It didn't say Babylon is a cage for everybody. It said Babylon is a cage of every filthy and foul spirit. So what they do is they defile the people's spirits. And people get trapped off in this Babylon. Because how can they go a place like Africa, the promised land, where we know in Africa they, they, they're not tolerating those kind of freedoms? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see what has happened to black folks with the sodomite agenda? Just to use that as, a, as one example. They might say you're African and we African, but you know the Africans, they haven't bought into that particular freedom. No, they say you could keep that one over here. You could keep that freedom. Me and one, that one. You but see what I'm saying? Let me jump in the JW because you, 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 like you, without that freedom and the JW actually uses the word freedom. That's that's what I was thinking, bro. And bring it, bring it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, Second Peter two and nineteen JW. While they are promising them freedom, ha ha, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For if anyone is overcome by someone, he is his slave. That's what's happened. People talk about how, how there's this new slavery. That's a new slavery. It's an immoral slavery. It's an immoral slavery. You know, there's this thing that they talk about with the communist socialist agenda. What they do is this. The same thing Balaam told Balak to do. He couldn't curse Israel. But if you get the people to corrupt themselves, then they will be open to, the, they will be able to curse themselves. So while they promise them liberty, right? The, the people who promise them they're servants of corruption. So it's a corrupt form of freedom, free from righteousness, right? For of whom a man is overcome. How, how did JW bring up that part, for whom a man is overcome? Uh, it says, uh, okay, okay. I'll just read the whole thing again. It says, while they are promising them freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Slaves of corruption. For if anyone is overcome by someone, he is his slave. Look at that. Think about that. Yes, I, yes, I just want to share that on that word when, when you were speaking that word. This is the verse that came to mind right here, and I, I thank you because there it brings out the same thing that you, you, you all saw on the screen when I brought up the G1657 in the Strong's that said freedom. And the Jehovah Witness doesn't say liberty, but it brings out the plain translation, freedom. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me, um, let me take Ecclesiastics real quick there. I got, I got two more verses I really want to get in all in. You know, to, you know, to strengthen, you know, to give the people my strength before we start to really, like, burn on fire. Yes, I <laughs> I don't know if so I'm going to get born here tonight. So, let me read Ecclesiastics um, 12. And we're going to hit 13 and 14. Um, you said 12? And then we can jump back into Proverbs, yeah. Ecclesiastics 12. <laughs> 
Mm. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll put whole matter right there. The whole matter. The whole matter. Where we? Okay, there we go. Right there. Whole matter. Hit search. Okay, so Ecclesiastes. Uh, you said you said thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. I really, I really like thirteen. Okay. Fourteen. Fourteen. Kind of close it all In in the skull field, this sums it up. It says the best thing possible to man under the law. Right. Thirteen. Ecclesiastes twelve, chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear, Elohim, and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man for Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil oh, oh, oh I should have said ha Elohim the Elohim yeah the true Elohim yes I <laughs> The conclusion of the whole matter, everything having been heard, is fear the true God mm. <laughs> and keep his commandments. For this is the whole obligation of man. Mm. For the true God will judge every deed, including every hidden thing, as to whether it is good or bad. Mm, ha Elohim, Ha'elohim, <laughs> fear Ha'elohim. Let me look at this quickly right here, just to hear with that part. That that part there where the fear. What's the fear in the in the um? The, the, the strongest, the fear in that one. Yeah, that's the, that's the, from the Yare. It says, uh, Hi Elohim Yera, Yera, Yera. Hi Elohim Yera, but it's from Yare, Yare. That's, that's the Yare one. Yare, we're going to touch on that. The Yare, it's Yare, yeah, Yare. Um, that's the, the fear, that's the reverential fear, the awe, like to stand in awe reverence, honor, respect. Almost it can also mean in a sense to be dread, like to dread in that sense. You know? That's the highest sense of fear. This this particular word, the yare, the root word is yare. But in the verb there, in the Hebrew, when it says fear the true God, it's um, ha Elohim yera. Ha Elohim yera. Yera. Like, because it's like, it's like, you know, like in in language, when you you have the different construction, like if, 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 if it's like a command, it's like a command in that sense. You know, yera, yera, you know, like yera, you know, yera, you know. <laughs> I like the part where he said, for this is the whole obligation of man. That's interesting right there, because I'm looking at this right here, and they don't have a Strong's word next to whole. We don't have the Strong's word next to whole, so I'm going to break this down right here for a moment. I'm going to go to the Hebrew, where every word is kind of like put there. They don't have the word. Let's see right here. It says, where A to most atav, uh, shemor kol ze, kol ha'adam. For this is the, oh, you know, it's interesting. In the Hebrew, it says, ki ze kol ha'adam. For this, ki ze, kol all ha'adam. So in the Hebrew it says, call means all and ha'ada means the man. So it's like, for this is the whole of the man. For this is the all of the Adam. This is the whole of the man. This is all, this is, this is for this, all the Adam. You know what I mean? Like to say all the man. So um, the Jehovah Witness sense of the what, obligation. Yeah. Is yeah because yeah yeah it, it has that force though it doesn't use a word that says obligation, the sense of the Hebrew is like literally is for this is all the Adam this is all the man, 
for this is all the man. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of no, interesting. Because they put the, the KJV's use duty, right? It says the duty of man. Yeah, yeah, but notice in the KJV. Notice in the KJV, y'all. Look at the KJV. The word duty is italicized. Yes. And they didn't put the Strong's word for whole, call. For this is the duty. This is all of the man. This is like to say all of the man. Like, 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 man... Are, if man doesn't have this, he's not a full man, is what it's saying. Think about it. That's why man, in a metaphoric sense, can be called a beast. You know what I mean? You know, there's man and there's beast. I do, you see, I look at duty and obligation. Those two words are not the same to me. That's just to me. I, I can't speak for nobody else. The way I look at them two words, they, I will share with the people how I look at them two words. Duty is something that other people put on you. That is how I look at that. This is your duty. People tell you this is your duty. This is your duty, right? Mm. When you grow up in a certain type of uh, society or, 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 or structure, there is certain things that from childhood, no one has to tell you. Because this is your obligation. <laughs> this is how I look at these two words. I look at it as, like I said, duty is something that is put upon you. Obligation is something that you just naturally, internally realize on your own. Well, if I say, if I say this is all of you, this is all of you, if this is the all of you, right, aren't you obliged to that? Exactly. This is the all of you. This is not Ex something exactly. of somebody else. This is seems so correct in this point to me. Over duty <laughs> like I said, duty is put on you by other people. Obligation is an internal thing that you internalize from yourself within you to come out and manifest itself. And that is how I look at this but, thing. This but, is just my idea. But that's why I've been trying to tutor my fellow disciples and say, whenever you're reading the good King James Bible and it has a word in italics, what does that mean? That means whatever words you see in italics in the King James Version, 99% of the time, 99 out of 100 times, is not there. I would dare say 100, but, you know, if I was a gambler, I like to know when to roll and when, when to fold up. So I'm going to go 99. <laughs> yeah, 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 because, because you know, they... Maybe I didn't come across it yet. I don't want to speak too fast. And, you know, a young town me come and catch me. You know what I mean? And I have to say, here's the crown. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not my crown, but your crown. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. The whole of man is all of man. It's all of the man. But but the deeper sense is like for this is all of, all the man. This is all of the man, the obligation of the man. That means that to be a real Adam, ha Adam, the Adam, to be a the man, and you don't reverence Elohim, ha Elohim, the true Elohim, ha Elohim, you know what I mean? And you don't keep his commandments, you're not a full man. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the falling short of the glory. Think about it for a moment. When we, when we talk about falling short of the glory, what do we mean? You hear people talk about, whoa, falling short of the glory. Now, we can look at it in religious, theological senses that make us feel good or comfort us according to our ignorance. But if we really were to study it, man was made in the image and after the likeness. That's how he was yeah. made and created. Now, we're not holding up to our obligation. Ah, because we don't have, we're not reverencing him, respecting him, and keeping his commands his his imperatives like do this his commands are positive and negative the positive commands are do when he says do this do this do this when he says don't do this that's a negative command so we have to keep his positive and his negative commands you know basically his commandments then we really are a man in his eyes I want to point that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> like we say, judge me in your eyes. You know, like from, you know, not, not, not how other people look at me, but, you know, because the second verse brings that out. When you brought oh, the, yeah. The, I, I wanted to touch that second verse too before we move on here that um, a lot of these wicked people in this world who 
you know, showing no fear for the most day. You know, some of them even tricking you in believing and making you believe that they have fear for the most day. And behind closed doors in the dark, they're doing all kind of evil and wickedness that you don't see them when they're out and they're, you know, shining the light. You know, they put on a good face for you and put on a good act. But in this second verse right here, is letting you know, and I'm going to read it again from the JW point standpoint. It says, for the true God will judge every deed, including every hidden thing. What they're doing in the dark that like you don't know about, mm. that is what he's going to judge. So don't worry about him. Mm. As to whether it is good or bad. Mm. So let him keep trying to fool people. I come out here in this light, skin teething with people and thing and putting on a good face and making people think that you for them and you fear the Lord and these things here when you in the dark doing all kind of wickedness showing no fear for the most high. And because you know, all these things are hard to go down. You know, I, 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 I close doors, molesting people, children. Mm. And, and supposed to be a faith based leader. You know, supposed to be a boy scout camp leader molesting a little boy, supposed to be a pastor, a deacon or whatever, and molesting a little boy, sleeping with people, wife, and these kind of things, mm. behind closed doors, these are the things we're talking about. Like mm. I said, the fire soon start to burn up in here tonight, I got one more scripture to go before we really start to burn a fire, but we're going to burn a fire. Yeah, I just wanted to get this verse, what is it, Kiet, Kiet Komase, for, for all work, Ha Elohim Yabi, the true Elohim will bring Bemishpat in judgment all upon call Ne'elam. Ne'elam, what the brother said, Ne'elam, that which is like hidden. It's interesting because the same word has to do with like even the idea of forever or world. Call Ne'elam, Im if Tob, if good, Tob, 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 if Tob, Weim Ra, Ra. Now, notice, Ra has the same, a similar sound like Yira, but Yira is a soft A. I just want to point that out, you know, because sometimes one might read it and, and think that the same thing. There's, there's Yira, Yira to reverence, and here it has Ra, Ra. Like, you know when we say like all that Ra, Ra? Yeah. No, that's how when we say Ra, Ra, we make the Ah a deeper sound. Notice that. Like that song, that song with, um, and Alicia Key, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, yeah. That that harder sound is the word for what they call evil or bad or not beneficial. Whether it is beneficial or not beneficial, like if benef if good or if bad, he will bring it. But the, but the but the word the verb is bring. He will bring it in judgment. He's gonna bring it in judgment. You know what I mean? And we're seeing a lot of things being brought into judgment this year. But come, come forward with him, my brother. Beautiful verse right here. Excellent. Yeah, we, got, we got one more verse to go to for the people before we um, transition into a little more fire. This verse here is um, Proverbs, the first Proverbs 1. Proverbs um, chapter 1? Proverbs chapter 1. And it's basically 10, but do 10 and 11. Wait, wait, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Okay, yeah, my son. My son. In, the, in one of the ancient senses, it's like my disciple. You know, my, my son. This is right here. My son. If sinners, okay, if sinners entice thee, hold on for a moment. Let me see why this verse is not. Let me go over here. Yeah, they try to fool me. I, I put it in the search. Everybody saw that. Y'all saw that. I put it in the search, my son and sinner, and nothing came up. Then I add the S, nothing came up. So then y'all saw why I had to press. I had to press like the reset. <laughs> and then two verses come up. So this verse right here. Um, Who said demon? Them don't want him to hear this one. Don't want to get this one right here. <laughs> they want to have to hear this one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this chapter here. 
Now, here, I can't say she's my girl in that sense. I got to give her respect, but wisdom. Oh, man, love wisdom. Mama, you know, <laughs> Proverbs 1 and 10. <laughs> my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Spoil, cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. I'll take the verse 16 to the period here. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Now that brings us to, I think, what is Romans chapter 3. That's going to bring us to what Paul, he quotes Psalm 14, 53. And he also quotes these kind of verses here. But yeah. This is peer pressure. I want everyone to know that Solomon, when instructing the disciples, the first lesson for teaching your sons, but teaching yourself, mind them, in this book here, because wisdom, we need this, wisdom. And the teacher is wisdom. The mother is wisdom, is the teacher here. And Solomon is like the principal. So when it says right here, this section the brother pointed to is peer pressure. It's peer pressure for the youths them. Peer pressure, but go through my brother. Go through. We'll, 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 fire, you know, the fire is already is already licking up. You know. <laughs> the fire don't lick. The fire don't lick. More fire. More fire. Even fire in my hand right now. More fire. More fire. Hotter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The JW, Proverbs one ten to sixteen. My son, if sinners try to entice you. Do not consent if they say, Come with us. Let us set an ambush mm. to shed blood. We will lie hidden, await for the innocent victims without cause. We will swallow them up. Like as the grave does hold, like those going down in the pit. Let us seize all their precious treasure. Mm. We will fill our houses with spoil. You should join us, and we will all share equal what we steal. My son, do not follow them. Keep your feet off their path, for, for their feet run to do evil. They hurry to shed blood. Mm. Now that last verse right there, Romans 3 and 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. It's interesting because we, hopefully we'll go there, you know, to dove it with this right here. Because excellent, excellent opening, my brother, with, with um, the Psalm 14 and, and, and 53. You know what I mean? Because this verse right here, it's interesting in the Hebrew. Go back to verse, um, was it 10? My son. My son, my disciple, my son. You know, usually like when the mind, when we're talking about like when, uh, when the, the early years, even the male child, no doubt, will have time and close to the mother. And, you know, learn things from and of the mother, you know. But in the ideal kind of pattern, like around like 12 or 13, usually goes up into more orders with like the father or other sons you know what i mean other sons to kind of now get like kind of like the man training and in the scripture proverbs is it so when he says my son right there you know he's not just speaking like to one son but to all sons and we and the singular so that we can take it personally if sinners entice thee Consent thou not. What's interesting about this right here is that in Hebrew, the word for sinners and sin, right? Sin, sinners 
and um um yeah chataim or chotaim. So this could be read as if sins entice thee, consent thou not. Are you always where I'm going with this? Yes. If sinners entice thee, don't consent. But even if sins, if that which you know cause you to miss that mark of righteousness to fall short right is enticing you even in your soul in your mind your feelings your emotion don't consent you know like you know don't consent now if they say right because in the same way that people will come to you and say right on the spiritual level you know you have, if you also i'm going with this you know um, those thoughts that we have to take in captivity when it says, you know, to take those thoughts that raise themselves up, you know what I mean, into captivity. So I'm, I'm pointing this out that on the plain level is people that will, sinners, others who go on astray, who will seek to convince others. But sometimes it can be those thoughts even in oneself that ain't right. You know what I mean? That will say, come with us, come with those thoughts. Come with those people. Those people, why are they evil? Because their thoughts, their bad mind. Come with us. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. This is so interesting because this needs to be understood to reverse the curse of the gang gangism that the lost found sheeple are going through. If you know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. You know, because there's nothing wrong with brethren and man them together in unity you know what i mean but for what purpose you know uh, what i mean see that you, what what are we unifying for everybody think that we're well, unity unity we need to come together and unify. <laughs> what are we unifying for because if we unify for the wrong thing is destruction ah uh, you know and it says lurk privily well, well, i think i think jw said an ambush i think i picked up an ambush setting up an ambush for the innocent, something like that, you know. I think uh, well, yeah, then we pull it I think it was on there. eleven, yeah. You know. Yeah, ambush, yeah. Ambush. Uh, move it off the screen for a second. Yeah, um, yeah, ambush. She says, um, eleven. If they say, come with us, let us set an ambush to shed blood. We will lie hidden, waiting for innocent victims without cause. Without cause. Ambush for you. you know what I mean? Ambush in the night. You know what I mean? That ambush in the night. Even when we talk about David, that's what they was doing. That's what Saul and them was doing with David. Basically, spreading lies and rumors. You know what I mean? In order for mine and mine to say, oh, this man, this man is this evil man. Are we going to get him? You know what I mean? And so it's kind of interesting that Solomon here. He mentions this at the beginning of the book of wisdom, Proverbs, because in a sense, you can't be about that life and about your life, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So even though ones might have been about that, they have to not consent to that no more. You know, may the power of Yeshua give you, you know, that power. You know what I mean? You know, not to walk in the way, because then the part we didn't even read was that the consequences, you know what I mean? The, uh, there are those consequences. But it's this verse, it's verse 16. I don't know if we can have a segue verse, because verse 16, I want to segue to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Right, verse, verse ten. Verse but, ten. Yeah, but keep keep Proverbs one and sixteen in mind, where it says, "For their feet run to evil, and make haste to shed blood." Yeah. So keeping that verse in mind, let's hear what Paul says. Paul also begins this reasoning in Romans, chapter three and ten. For it's written, "There is none righteous, no, not one." You know, none righteous, no, not one. Now, some people misconstrue this verse 
and say, well, like that means there's no nobody, there, there, there's there's never been anybody who is righteous. That's not what it's saying here. There, there, there's a strong context. Uh, you want to um, understand what you're doing with um, with ten? But I was just looking here, right? And I think we should we would be remiss if we didn't put nine. It's just um, nine, you know. Listen, whenever my brethren use a word like we'll be remiss, remiss, you know you have to listen to that and I'd say, all right. <laughs> I, I said, I said, the brother said, <laughs> because that's what sin is. Sin is like missing the mark, like falling short. You, 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 your dart doesn't hit the bullseye. You know what I mean? <laughs> so right here. Romans, good point, good point. Yes, I. Here in the Schofield Bible says this section is the final verdict. The whole world is guilty before Ha Elohim, before Ha Elohim, before the Almighty Power. So verse 9 says, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews, Yehudi, Yehudim, and Gentiles. Right, and Gentiles, that's the Hellenists, like the Greeks, right? Yehudim and the Greeks, the Gentiles, that they are all under sin. They are all under ukkery, right? The same word where it says if sinners, right? The root of sinners is sin, right? Verse 10. Now here, I just want to point this out to everyone. Here, Paul is quoting... The psalm that we began off with, right? And that's Psalm 14, verse 1 and verse th 3. So Psalm 14, verse 1 and verse 3. So I, I, want, I want to note this here that we began off, you began off, you said, let's start with Psalm 14. And we just, just vibes. And now we come to the point where you brought forward Proverbs. And we went up to verse 16. Now check this out. Paul here is quoting this. Now in the Ethiopian and the Greek Bibles, Psalm 14 has all of these verses. But in the Hebrew Bible, those verses are not there. There's some additional verses. Because what Paul does, he begins off with Psalm 14, and then he quotes other verses on this same theme. Whether from memory or not, you know, from elsewhere in the scripture, like Proverbs. So I'm going to go on right here. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after Hilehim, the Elohim. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now remember, the context of Psalm 14 is the fool saying, not out of his mouth, but in his heart, that there is no God. Ain Elohim. Now, I, we reason on this, but we didn't bring it out to the people, that Elohim, the Elohim title in the scripture of Yahuwah as the powers, the power of power, the almighty powers, is the creator title as well as the judgment title. I want to point that out to everybody because then the psalm will make much more sense when the fool, not the intellectual deficient, but the morally deficient person says that there is no judgment. So they can just do whatever because there's no one to keep them to account. Like you see wicked things going on and yet nothing happened. People get, a, get, get away with wicked doing and it increases in lawlessness. This is what Paul is talking about in that in that mind or minds of people where there is no sense of a creator and a judge. That this is his creation. He created it. It didn't just it didn't just um, evolve, so to speak, like people think, right? But it was created. You know what I mean? And that he is the judge of his creation. If you created something and made something, you say, this is your thing. I couldn't tell you, well, it should go like this. And this is the thing that you made and you created. You judge that. They are all gone out of the way. 
they are together become unprofitable. That means those who have no fear, no reverence of Yah. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat, now we're going to get into the description of them. Their throat is an open sepulcher. It is like an open tomb. With their tongues, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Check verse 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. <laughs> verse 16. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of shalom, the way of peace, of, of wholeness, right? perfectness, healthiness have they not known there is no fear uh oh there is no reverence of Hilahim of the Elohim there's no fear of God before their eyes now I'm pause right here at this verse this is this is a massive quote that Paul makes and it shows how they used to vibes and reason you know, one more thing for the eye come in and read. When it says, seeketh after God. In a Hebrew sense, to seek after Elohim is to seek after him by studying, understanding his revealed revelation. That's like saying the scripture. We seek Elohim by seeking to study the scripture and study his creation. You know, and, and you know, study ourselves and study humanity, you know what I'm saying? And, and check his word. That's what it means to seek. To seek after Elohim is to seek his will, his way, to learn his word, to meditate on his word, to reason on his word. Yes, I, Rastafari, his word. Yes, it's like learning someone's character, you know? Ah, yes, yeah, so you can recognize, oh, wow, this thing I read in the book. In the scripts, I see this in creation. I see this in reality. That means the word is reality. Yes, I. Right, yes, I. Thanks. Uh, we start nine, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yes, I. G W. What then? Are we any better position? Not at all. For above, we have made the change that Jews as well as Greeks are all under sin. Mm. Just as it is written, there is not a righteous man, not even one. There is no one who has any insight. There is no one who shears of God. Who, who what? Who searches for me? Who, me? who searches for God? Sorry, uh, I, 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 I. Yes, sir. Yeah, there is there is no one who searches for God. All men have turned aside. All of them have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness, not so much as one. Their throat is an open grave mm. they have deceived with their tongues venom of apps is behind their lips and their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness their feet are swift to shed blood ruin and misery are their ways and they have not known the way of peace. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Mm, mm, mm. I said that their throat is an open grave. <coughs> you see? So that, that goes to the full. Remember Paul, if we turn back, if we turn to, to, to Psalm 14, verse 1 and focus on verse 1 and 3 we can see where Paul is referring what did he say he said as just as it's written just as it's written you know and then he he then selects elsewhere in the scripture 
like in um, verse, uh, their feet are swift to shed blood. That was in Proverbs 1 and 16. You know, 1 and 16, he speaks on that right there. And other verses like Psalm, Psalm 10 and 7. It's interesting how he goes to elsewhere in the scripture to kind of give a profile of the wicked. He's, this is a profile of the wicked who basically is the fool who says in his heart there's no Elohim, there's no Yah, there's no judge. You know what I mean? There's no creator. Because if you believe the, 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 there's no creator, then people can do with the earth whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? If you recognize that there's one who created this, you know what I'm saying? You're going to think different about how you handle the creation. Wouldn't you think so? <laughs> but if you think that it just came about by accident, you know what I mean? Then you'll treat it whatever way. That's why it says there's no fear. And he ends with the point, not that the fool says in his heart, but he ends with the point that there is no reverence, there's no fear of the true God, Ha Elohim, before their eyes in their way of seeing things. How they see things. Because that's what, that's what you had brought forward when we were just vibes and you were saying about how like you see all this wickedness going on, all this killing and murder and it's almost like people just keep doing it. It just keeps going on because... It's amplifying. It's like it's amplifying. I mean... And because who can stop them? Think about it for a moment. You know how Revelation said, not to cut the eye, Revelation says, um, who can make war with Babylon? Who can make war with them? Think about it. You have a bully, somebody in the area who got the most guns, the most guys and everything. You know what I mean? One will be hard pressed. You know what I mean? To make, you know, to do anything about that. Because one would think, well, who can, who can fight them? And the bully run the block, right? That's what's happening now. And the evil bully is running the block now. You know what I mean? And through promising them freedom, it got a lot of them trapped off in cage, the cage of Babylon. You know, when I talk about Babylon being the cage, bro, I don't know what you just touched on that one. It says Babylon's a cage. It's a cage of every filthy and foul sp spirit. Think about it. It didn't say it's a cage for everybody. No. But think about it. If you're on the vibration frequency of Babylon and Hollywood and everything, can you leave there? <laughs> Can you go away from there? Can you? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they trap you within their self. Ah. Uh, the, 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 the JW use a word in here that um, I had to, I had to, just had to look that word up because I didn't know where it was. In, in verse 13, when it says, um, their throats, their throat is an open grave. They have deceived with their tongues. Venom of apps is behind their lips. Apps. When he said venom of apps, I didn't know what they was talking about. Oh, apps. ass. I didn't know what, yeah, yeah, I didn't the know what ass, they was talking about. The ass Something. is a, 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 a small and most venomous serpent. It's a small snake. But it's most... is um, a small southern European viper with, a, <laughs> with an upturned snout. Woo! Other, other terms for Egyptian cobra. Yo, 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 yo. You know what you have to do? I don't know what, what, I don't know if you're on your phone. Take a take a screenshot of that one you can and send that one to me, man. I like that I one right there. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to read that one more time because your definition is a... I would say it's better than my definition right here. This one's good, but I like how that one said it. <laughs> yeah, because they said the they said that the bite of the ass is fatal unless the part bitten is immediately cut away. You, you heard that? That the, the the bite is fatal. Like if if a person get bit. They suggest yeah. that you should cut that part immediately away. Think about that for a moment. That's, that, that's a very venomous snake for real. You see what I'm saying? Because that, that will get into the stream fast, fast. But very what kind... Fast. I'm, 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 I'm,
what is uh, describe it in your definition there again? Yeah, just send, yeah, just send it to you. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got it on this phone. I have to transfer. I got a it. Small southern European viper with an upturned snout. Another term for Egyptian cobra. Another term for an Egyptian cobra. Upturned snout. It's a, it's European. You heard that? Yeah, it's a European viper. A European viper. That's interesting. And then it's a it, it's synonymous with the Egyptian <laughs> that, cobra. That could be interpreted in a couple of ways. You know? <laughs> I, I think I think it, I think it was meant to be interpreted how it is. No. <laughs> and notice it has a link with Egypt. You know what I mean? You know? Oh yeah, I got it right here. I got it right here. Ass. Yeah, I'm gonna send this to my other phone over here. Yeah, so I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's I, I see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah. So, so the ass. Yeah, yeah. The ass. Cause there's different kind of snakes, but the poison of ass. That means since it's such a venomous. That's how and venomous. Saying, that's plural. That's plural. So when it says venomous apps behind their lips, they're talking about more than one. More than venom, one. one. Yeah. <laughs> more than one. And yeah. if the venom of the asp is like that, then what is their poison under their lips? You know, like, think about the media. Think about what goes on in the media. You know what I'm saying? And the confusion in the social media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the deception. It's some strong poison. And remember, they said if the ass bites somebody or bites a place, the best solution, they said, to cut, it, cut that part off. You know what I mean? Contaminate the way, contaminate the whole thing. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise, yeah, otherwise the whole thing gets, yeah, it gets contaminated. Um, but this verse right there, let me, let me zoom in on this verse because Paul, Paul, as we reasoned on before, you know, he he was highly gifted, and I know why Yeshua chose him. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's Psalm five and nine, Psalm five and nine, and Psalm one forty and three. Psalm five and nine. Yeah, Psalm 5 and 9. Let me go there right here and see if this is the quote. Because it's saying that Paul must have had Psalm 5 and 9 in mind. Let me... 5 and 9 says this right here. It says, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Five and nine, JW, for, for nothing they see can be trusted. Within them is nothing but malice. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Mm, yeah, so so Paul must have had these verses in mind because yeah, yeah, elsewhere, elsewhere the character is profiled right there. You know what I mean? So these types are part of you know, are part of the you could say the scenery. You know, and the scripts is seeking to make ones aware. You know, like one ones. You know what I mean? You know, there's no faithfulness in their mouth. What did JW bring out? It's a faithfulness. It said. It says, uh, for nothing they say can be trusted within them is nothing but malice. Malice. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Hmm. And, and and that's a lot of these ones who out here professionalizing to the people them and giving them this this process process food as a meal and the people eating this thing and then they're getting good food and getting false doctrine. They're not getting no pro and good food. The they're getting processed poo. Yes, this is what they're getting. <laughs> For real. For you know, really? and there's a lot of these things going on, and people around here, you know, we were, you know, we as a people, you know, we running wrong and idolizing some of these people, and 
taking your hard earned money and supporting these people and these people ain't doing nothing for you, nothing for the community. You know, any little thing they do is not for the community, it's for their, their, their status, you know, to keep their image that they're trying to portray upon people. While we show all here that these things they do in the dark, something for them, you know? Mm. So these things here, what they running wrong with, and got this smooth talk. I like how he said that they, you know, the truth is an open grave. Because every time they open their mouth, it's deceit. Mm, it's like a grave. It's deadly. It's <laughs> deadly. What they say, what they say is like, yeah, it's deadly. What come out their mouth is, is deadly. Yep. Like uh, on one forty and three, for a moment. It has here they have they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. This is Psalms one forty and three. Yeah, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Add his poisons under their lips. Selah. This one you say on the JW said they sharpen their tongues like that of a serpent. Venom of vipers is behind their lips. Sailor. Venom of vipers are behind your lips. Wait, that's it, vipers? What you let these people put inside of your ears. Mm. You know, we I have to big up ancient king. You know, if anybody listening and know ancient king, the ancient king have been up on this one here. Ancient king said a thing one time, right? I don't know if, who he gave it from, uh, that's his sound, but I credit him with it because he's the only man I hear with it. Mm. And ancient, ancient king, in an interview one time, he said that we not only have to be careful of what we let out into the universe as far as what we speak with our mouth but we have to be equally careful of what we let into our universe which is our ears you know mm. so it's a 50 50 proposition of what we put out verbally to the world and what we let the world put back into us we have mm. to keep love these things it's like this thing just tell you right now these people got the venoms of vipers behind their lips the words that they speak to mm. use like the venom of a viper. Mm. Like you just said, well, I like, got a viper there, so, so dangerous. Wherever he bites, you got to cut it off. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's going to spread to the whole system. Wow. Like, just speaking of that, the KJV serpent's adders, the adder is actually uh, asp. Is just a, another word for the ass. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the same deadly venom, there's same, same venom, same snake. Same snake, same snake. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, that's why even in the next verse, it says, uh, "Keep me, O Jehovah, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man." who have purpose to overthrow my goings. You know, just had to just put that word there. You know, we have to pray to, to be kept and seek to keep ourselves, you know, from the hands of the wicked and be preserved from the violent man. I mean, even just thinking about all the, for the last, on a heightened level, the state-sponsored, Murders, you know what I mean? Like with the with, with the wars or the the killings, you know what I mean? And this is not even getting into no politics, but just thinking of like what they call the human course. Now this is just this is good over evil. We you know mean 
we we holding no punches like that, you know. This is a Rastafari reasoning we have in here, you know. This is a Rastafari order we have all biblical Rastafari things we dealing with. So we burning on a fire and anything that don't deal with good over evil, you know. This discriminating, bombing and killing of innocent people. We ain't there for these things, yeah. We ain't there no political, nobody said and them thing that, you know, but Mali said best we there and just said, okay? That's who said we there and we there and they said that the most said. And this killing of innocent people who do you not know, these things is, is, is like, like it's an abomination to I and I. I don't believe in these kind of things. You're just killing innocent people. You can't tell me that you could justify killing a hundred men because you get one man you were looking for. Preserve I and I from the violent man. Listen, we don't, we don't condone these things here. You know, then you said this man here is an evil man or whatever. He don't do this wherever, wherever, right? And this man in some other man country, you don't get permission from the country. You bomb the man, kill all kind of innocent people around the man and justify it. You doing this because you kill this one man. So all this other thing you call collateral damage. You ain't think that you causing more problem than you solving? Mm. Because the innocent people, them that you discriminately killing when you doing these things here, eh, who was not your enemy, now you creating enemies, and you telling me you doing more good? Mm. Them things don't make no sense to me. This is why I ask these questions, who ain't got no faith in the Lord, because I'm watching these things going on on the own. Mm. Yep. Yeah. It's a bunch of people who ain't got nothing to do with things, is who getting killed on this earth. Starvation and these kind of things is going on. Genocide is happening in real time. Well, we have access to all kind of technology and all these things. These things is happening right now on the earth. And people just watching. It's like a reality TV show, my lad. Mm. This is how this thing turned out to be. This is reality TV people tune in for two. Tune in to see what's going on. This is reality TV. Mm, mm, mm. With all these dead people. Mm. And this thing continue to go on. And this thing gonna get worse now. And it has to there has to be an account. You know? Let me read what you just read right. That's why the JW real quick there. Uh, Psalms 140, what do you read? You read about three to... Um, three and four. Three and four. Three, three and four. They sharpen their tongue like that of a serpent. The venom of vipers are behind their lips. Protect me, O Jehovah, from the hands of the wicked. See if God me from violent men, for those who scheme to trick me. Who seem to trip me? Ah. Trip. Trip. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I walk in there, you put a photo of trip, you know. Mm. <laughs> I true, I true. Yeah, but that... you think the kind of trip they're talking about, they ain't talking about walking and putting foot in front of you and trip you, you know. They're talking about taking you after a right and righteous part, you know. That's the trip they're talking about, you know, to trip you. You know, to get you to, you know, to, you know, to do something that is not right and righteous. Like that's to, to do something that is not pleasing in the eyes of the Lord, you know. That's why he said, him, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to thy sight, see. Mm, mm. This is the thing. True, true, or, true. Don't get tripped up from that. Yeah, man, you know? yeah, man. Or, or, or in the old King James to overthrow. Like overthrow my goings. You know, I'm thinking about what His Majesty autobiography, my life in Ethiopia's progress. That word progress is like like almost like goings, you know? And how, you know, they scheme against the righteous. You know what I'm saying? Like even at that level, the psalm, the, the words of the psalm were just resonating with the godless creeping coup and the things that, that had gone in Ethiopia. From said time, you know what I mean? From yes, right. 19, I, I think the JW talked about 1973. 
you know they say about 1973 is like an end of the world a lot of people like mock it but from a rastafari perspective and not being a jehovah witness per se but do love enough of their works and have learned certain things i admire you know their diligency you know to diligency yeah to putting forward you know the truth as they see and even the prophecy 1973 was the end of a kind of a world if you always want me to say you know what i mean almost the end of like with his majesty with with um his majesty leaving the palace with his majesty it's like when in israel when the ark was taken they said that the glory of the lord had left the temple you know what i mean so with 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 the glory of the lord leaving the temple like in 1973 leading into like to 1974 but that's the that's the pivotal time there 73 74 you know it kind of even caused prophecy to 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 um accelerate if you was going to say because think about what was going on even in the West around that same time, the mid 70s. You know what I'm saying? The different policies that were being initiated that needed time to kind of like when you put a seed in the ground, it needs time to grow. But then it starts to grow, it starts to bear fruit. So then we scroll forward, you know, like, like to where we're at now like 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 well about 50 or so years you know what i'm saying yeah. as we scroll forward like 40 to 50 years we get to see the seeds you know of the weeds and now we are in this kind of a a, a kind of a, 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 a i can't say i, I want to say a forest not really a forest but you know like the weeds all grown up to where we're at right now because the things that are happening now didn't just happen because it happened now. They have roots in the recent and distant past. You know what I mean? The thing that was, you know, is the thing that will be. So the seeds that they planted back then are bearing fruit right now. Like even the thing about promise and freedom. You know what I mean? We live in a time where there's a lot of things that are permitted that morally right still was done but it was not co-signed and 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 the whole world say yeah that's how we doing it now but with them doing it it's not for good it's not for good i mean look what's really going on look what we really are right now with the with the wicked or the defiant the ratchet having no fear because they they don't think that there's no judgment because look all the wicked acts that have been done and what's the judgment for it I could scroll back to Kennedy and the Kennedy assassination. Even the Kennedy assassination, when you think about it, that was major, bro. That was major. Well, where was the judgment? Where was the, where was the, how can I say, um, was there any consequence to that? Well, these are assassinations. We've been assassinated more than anybody on the face of the earth. I mean, we are like sheep for the slaughter, right? What it says all day long slaughter. on that I mean, level. Um, um, but we still come again. No. <laughs> we know that they have been assassinating our black leaders them for four hundred years. I hear what I say. Not only on this continent. But on the continent of Africa. But see, because I can... every time an African stand up to them, mm. he's assassinated. But that's why I'll say what I'm saying, that the chickens... So I can say it. Malcolm shouldn't have said it then. You know, that's just my, my view. But the chickens are coming home to roost. In other words, when Kennedy was assassinated like that, such a such an inside job at that. You know what I mean? High level. You know, so many of our people and innocent people were already assassinated. So it's like that which they, how can I say, they sow the wind, they reap the whirlwind. You know what I mean? So the Kennedy assassination is not more so than the assassination of our black leaders. 
But I'm saying that all of that led to that, if you always want to say. That this led to that. <laughs> but they don't see the connection between the two. Even Malcolm understood the connection between the two. You know what I mean? And he said what he said, but what he said at that time was not really... I mean, it wasn't appropriate on a certain... I know people people argue with me on that. It wasn't appropriate, but it was said. It's still, you know what I mean? Things that yeah. things that we say shouldn't have been done were done. <laughs> you know, we move on. But yeah, man, they have... But even on that level, um, it's like what Paul was saying. Jew and Gentile. Because of how we have fallen short as a people, you know, and, and, and looking at this from the generations before, you know, and also seeing ourselves as part of that generation, you know, the, the, you know, generation and generation, is that those things that happened to us, we were guilty. You know what I'm saying? We were guilty in that sense. And that doesn't justify... You know what what the wicked have done that had nothing to do with what father had will but their own evil their own lack of fear and reverence you know what i mean but we are all guilty that when you read that verse i was listening to jw and i was looking over the kjv and romans when he said jew and gentile that's almost like we could say almost today like black and white you know, from an Israelite, I have to say, Rastafari perspective, you know, are guilty. You know what I mean? But there is still the matter of that reverence of Elohim. If we come to a reverence of Elohim, we can make good on what other generations did not fulfill. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now, what about the Gentiles? What about the Greeks? What about the Romans? What about this Babylon system, this Anglo-European system? Because the Anglo-European, England and America, right, um, upper and lower Egypt, that is back in what's going on over in the other regions of the world. You know what I mean? So, so will they come to a, a fear of God or is God going to have to judge? <laughs> I got a verse for you right here. A verse for y'all right here. Um, and heal up brother Obadiah, right? Because uh, he had quoted this verse, so I have made reference to, you know, um, he had he had quoted this, and because some people say they fight against Babylon, right? I know, not fight against Babylon in that sense, but Revelation seventeen seventeen will clarify what I mean by this. Right? Now, this is interesting because the whole verse is talking about the B system, these governments, and these systems of today is what the prophets were talking about, the B systems. Right? You know, how they will be running the world or ruining the world. In Revelation 17, 17 it says, for Elohim have put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. <laughs> You remember talking about hardening Pharaoh's heart? Hardening the heart, <laughs> For Elohim have put it in their heart to harden his... I mean, <laughs> Slika. For Elohim have put it in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of Elohim shall be fulfilled. So although the lack of fear of Elohim is for the majority their choice, you know what I'm saying? But even that there is fulfilling the words of Elohim. You see what I'm saying? But he has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. So Brother Obadiah and I was reasoning on this, and I, I, I've had this reason before, but it was good to hear his perspective of this is that some say they're fighting Babylon or they, you know, you, you, you're using your energy in an unprofitable, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, um, the good fight is the fight of faith, is doing good for goodness sake. You know, that's the good fight. You know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, 
pressures come on and you have to fight through that right so you can do the good you can do that which is right you can make that right choice but to fight against the babylon system as ones might say is not what the righteous have been called to do because we've been revealed or has been revealed to us in revelation that elohim had put it in their hearts to fulfill his will some people see that what's going on is that look what the b system is doing i'm a, we're gonna go out there and protest you're gonna do what <laughs> and you think that's gonna stop them, right? <laughs> yeah, what, uh, this what the um, the JW says. Uh, Revelation seventeen and seventeen, is that right? Yes, sir. It was, uh, for God put for God put it into their hearts to carry out His thought. Yes, to carry out their one thought by giving their kingdom to the wild beasts until the words of God will have been accomplished. Mm. The wild beast. Now remember, beast many times in the Bible is not only referring to the four-legged. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Remember what, what the obligation of the Adam, of the man is? Remember the obligation of the... Of, of the man <laughs> so if he's not fulfilling his obligation he's falling short of that glory as man and and ha elohim sight and therefore he can be considered a beast you know because because can a beast keep like like torah and 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 and, and like 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 do what man is supposed to do no you know what I'm saying? So the beast, you know what I mean? The beast system, you know, is a system of people who look like people, but if you check them out, they they like they like the serpents and the ass, you know what I mean? <laughs> and like the abominable things. Exactly, the same abominable things that Peter saw when that that plate came down from heaven, you know. <laughs> And he saw all four footed beasts. Yeah. But 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 notice in that parable that 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 vision that, that Peter saw with the abominable different four footed beasts, that he was thinking it was talking about physical eating. But then it yeah, was shown that. it was shown to him it's all about types of people. Yo, 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 I think I need to go there right there. I think I if I can find that one. Four footed. Let's see, four footed. Let's see, four footed. Um, right here. Do I have that right here? Four footed. Um, this is all man up. Four footed. Let's see, where is it? This is a four footed beast. All creeping thing when, when when Peter saw that. Um, that table. Let me let me look up table. When the table had dropped down in his vision from heaven, right? A table, right? Let's see right here. Um, let me input beast. Let's see, I'll get it right here. Beast. Mm, maybe don't use beast. Uh, what's that verse? What's that verse? I said, okay, table. I think it was, you said heaven. Okay. This happened sometime, but we. Is what Acts is actually looking for? Acts, you found it? I wonder if it's Acts 10 28. You're looking for something like that where you say, um, where you tell Peter, get up and eat. And he said, don't eat anything common and clean. That's what you're talking about? Okay, common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was trying to remember the verse, the KJV. Common. Yeah, it's Acts, Acts 10, I think. Acts 10, 28. I think I might have saw it in the other verses. Yeah, but but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I. Yes, I. But Peter, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Four foot. Okay, okay. I spelled four foot. Uh, uh, two separate words. They have four footed right here. It says verse 11. And saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending to him, as it had been a great 
sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner yeah here all manner of oh yeah yeah i did see the verse yeah all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts so he's given over to the wild beasts right and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise peter kill and eat but peter said not so adonai for i have never eaten anything that is common or unclean right and the voice spake to him again the second time what elohim have cleansed that call not thou common right and let's see let's see where it goes it's a little later on when he recognizes right i don't know if it's the same chapter but it's a little later on when he recognizes that it wasn't talking about eating unclean food but it was talking about other peoples so you know what i mean other people some might even say other nations it was talking about these other nations. Yeah, that what you're talking about is verse 28. Yeah, I'm so, looking at the same chapter, verse 28. And he said to him, Ye know how, thank you, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Yehudi to keep company or to come to one of another nation. Now, let me say this to everyone. There is no really law, but it was a law that the religious teachers, the religious teachers, it was, it was the commandments of men. Let me put it like that. But there is no law like in Torah that says this. You know what I mean? That a Yehudi, a Judean, a Judahite is, is like to keep company or to come to one of another nation. But Elohim have shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Thank you. Right there. You know, so to the Yehudi, the Jews at that time, because of their following of the different religious teachers, you know, believe that, hey, you know, we can't company with like people of another nation. You know what I mean? We kind of like had, yeah. We couldn't go to people of another nation, you know, like, you know, like, 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 you know, like you have friends, you know, you have friends that are from other nations and you sit down and chat or speak with them. That's what Peter was doing. But then when the brothers came from Jerusalem, he, um, he had like, he didn't know, you know what I mean? The other, you know, brethren, you know what I mean? I would almost say almost like it's like a black roster. The Jamaican roster, and when he's in foreign, he be with the different nations, white, Asian, this, that, you know, European, whatever, you know what I mean, Indian. But then, when some of his brothers come from Jamaica, you know what I mean, who are like, like super black, you know what I mean? He's like, yo, you know what I mean? <laughs> ja, yeah. tell me this, but now Ja has to kind of like, you know, show you a vision and thing. And then he had to figure it out. And then he figured out when he says that Elohim has shewed me that I should not. It's not saying whether they are common or unclean, but I shouldn't be calling any man common or unclean to say like, well, he's less than a man. You know what I mean? Because all have been proven, whether Yehudi or whether Greek, to have fallen short. The Yehudi with the Torah and the Greek without the Torah. <laughs> you know, just to keep it a buck, you know, not being on the black man's side or the white man's side. Yeah, on Jah's side. On Jah's side. And, I'm, and I give thanks for him, you know, being on I and I, you know, his people's side. Because it wasn't for him. Like you say, he didn't save us because we were the best of every people. He saved us because of his namesake. <laughs> Serious thing. You know, think serious thing. Serious thing there. So, yeah, no, we think he's so special, you know? <laughs> you know not, what I mean? <laughs> not realizing if you think you're that special, you know, then then you don't think some kind of serious responsibility come with it. To, to whom more? What's that verse? To whom more, more is, is given more is required. Ah, 
You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so we went around to our Kimbo. Oh, we walk, we visualize, we do that. Well, if you realize that, what are you doing about it? You know, what are you doing with it? You know, what kind of work are you dealing with? Mm. If you're just sitting on that alone. And, and you know, do we have the reference? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do we have that reverence of him? Do we have that 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 fear, that that righteous fear, which is that reverence of him? You know, you know. But yeah, yerah, yerah, yeah, yerat. You know, the fear of Elohim. You know, um, but it's interesting because it's it's the context is not even a question of even just fear. But it's the context of the relationship. You know what I'm saying? You know, I I, I have this this still here where it says somebody was doing something back in 2017. Bring back the fear of the Lord in the church. I just thought it was an interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I hope that I hope that worked out well for them. You know what I mean? You know, the reverence. Of he who be who he be, yeah, man, yeah, man. We're getting to maybe another level of um, of of like with the Hebrew right there, but just keeping it kind of like you know in the simplicity. Oh, the the song was define yourself. Remember, I was trying to remember the song where I said it's not about us, like you know, it's for us to define ourselves, cause other peoples, you know what I mean. You know, have already done so for 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 themselves. Whether it's true or whether it's false, we gotta, you know, it's a, you know ourselves. You know what I mean? <laughs> Define ourselves. Yeah, that's the tune there. Define yourself. You know? Yeah. You know? Time for Rastafari and and how we define ourselves according to the teaching of His Majesty. You know what I mean? You are, um... You read Axwell from where you read from? Where to where? Oh, started? yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had begun. I had, it was the top part, the upper part, where, what was the verse that you had pointed out to me? You pointed out verse, I think I started from verse, um, verse 11. Oh, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I took it down to uh, verse, um, I think I took it down to verse uh, 16 or so. Well, I didn't read 16, but yeah, to verse 15, but 16 right there. And then you yeah, pointed out. Yeah, and then 28. Yeah, okay. yes, so, sir. Yeah, so 11 to 16 and then 28. Yeah. Good thanks, sir. All right. Yeah. 11, that's Acts 10, 11. And saw heaven open and something descending like a great lying sheet being let down by its four corners on the earth and in it were all sorts of four footed animals and reptiles of the earth and birds of heaven then a voice said to them excuse me a voice said to him get up Peter slaughter and eat but Peter said no at all, Lord, because I have never eaten anything defiled <laughs> or unclean. And a voice spoke again to him a second time. Stop calling defiled the things God has cleansed. This happened a third time, and immediately it was taken up into heaven. Uh, 28. 28. He said to them, You well know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate or approach a man of another race, and yet God has shown me that I should not call no man defiled or unclean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Rastafari. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, sir. But it's interesting that the father would use the example of those basically unclean animals to make this point to Peter. You know what I'm saying? And how even from the previous reads, the the wicked, the ratchet, the defiant, you know, they are likened to different some like the reptiles, you know what I mean? That likeness right there, you know? Connecting that with the beast system. You know, not a literal beast, but according to how it is written, brings out, you know, the sense of like, you know, that, that poison, you know, the poisonous of the system. The system is poisonous. And it's the whole system, you know, people think it's just a system where they live at. This is a wall system we are talking about that is like this. It's the whole wall system set up this way. Mm-hmm, yep. Yep, because remember what they called it from the beginning, they called it a New World Order. People don't like, people keep saying New World Order is coming. I say it's already here. What they're trying to do is repair the breach. They're trying to actually repair the, 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 the system was, was breached. You know what I mean? But they're trying to fix it in a sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a prison. You know, they have ones in prison and there's a prison break. Some got out. Rastafari, you know what I mean? And then they're like, oh man, we got to do something about this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause, yeah, reset. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to reset. Ah, it's the reset. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make a reset. Because, you know, people say, New World Order is coming, New World. And I go back to that $17.76 bill thing. And on the back of it says Nouveau Ordo Seclorum. They're clearly saying back from 1776, a new order of the ages, like a new world order. And we still are in that system, and the ones who are trying to make a new system are the same system. You know what I'm saying, bro? It's like, it's like what, what thing I go on? <laughs> See, if it was really a new world order, it will be the new world order of the kingdom. You know what I mean? Which we should be laboring for. You know what I mean? In this earth. You know what I mean? The true kingdom. You know what I mean? But since it's not that, then they're just resetting. They're trying to reset the the new world order to the new new world order. <laughs> but yes, I uh, definitely yeah, no. have to build build on yeah, this one. Yeah, we watching wrong wrong these this whole thing we're going on in Africa right now. And we are watching certain African leaders right now that seem like they have a fear for the most I based on how they are trying to do stuff that is beneficial for the people of their country where they live at. And we see so many others now who show that they have more of, more of a fear for the Western powers than they do of the Most High. Because they're still fighting against their own brothers and sisters to benefit the Western powers, which is an abomination on the side of the Most High. So who do they really fear? They fear the Lord or they fear the, the Western powers? And this is what's going on. Man fearing man instead of fearing the Most High. Mm. Mm. You know, this is a serious thing. So we mm. have to deal with this thing here we're dealing with. Mm. Because we're supposed to have a fear and a reverence for the most day. And we're having this thing for man. This is, this is not right. We deal with good over evil. And these people are dealing with evil. To fight your brother for your enemy. Is evil to speak against your brother for your enemy. Is evil mm. to let your enemy do anything to your brother you stand by and watch. Is evil. This is showing no fear for the Lord. Mm. So this thing is going around the wall. Ah, uh, when we look, you know, and we cannot 
leave Africa out of this because <laughs> this has been going on there for 200 years as well and longer mm. because it started over there before ever, before anything ever happened within the slave ship. This mm. thing was going on on the continent of Africa. The Muslim slave trade. These things were going on a long time. But the evil in the world right now is just, it, it just, yeah. it just multiplying day by day by day by day by day. And it seems like because of so much in the last 20, 30 years, a short span of time, the amount of atrocities and evil that has happened on this earth, it seems like the people are desensitized to evil. Mm -hmm. The things like a video game. Like I said earlier, it's reality TV. Mm. It's entertainment. Evil has become entertainment. How much did I today? Oh, wow, that's sad. You know, that happened, this happened. Oh, that break my heart. Oh. But then right after that, you go and watch a comedy show and laugh and go back to your own life and live your life. And and, and the same thing you was talking was just a tragedy and break your heart. You ain't thinking about that no more. You mm. broke your heart when you saw it, but your heart really broke because you ain't paying that no attention 15, 20 minutes from now. Could you see something else? Okay. <laughs> Yo, I got to give you this verse, man. Proverbs twenty nine twenty five. The fear of man bringeth a sneer. But whoso trusteth in Yahweh shall be safe. Just when you were speaking right there, the fear of man, and it's a whole different word, harada, the anxiety, the quaking, the trembling, the anxiety. 20, Proverbs 29? 29, 25, yeah. Yeah. Fear of man bringeth a sneer. <laughs> yeah, this is the trembling. Now, no, pause right here. JW says trembling. This was the next level of fear. It's all fear, fear. All right? Look forward. It's all fear, fear. Look at the H2731. The brothers don't read the JW, Jehovah Witness, right? I like how they bring out and they brought out certain words that sometimes you know when we go to the Hebrew, but you can see those upgrades, that clarified thing. Here, the Hebrew word H2731 is harada, harada. What does harada mean? BDV says it's fear, but more clearly, what kind of fear? It's anxiety, quaking, trembling, extreme anxiety, anxious care. That's the sense of the word right here. Anxiety, right? Or trembling, but in the sense of anxiety. Go through. So the KJV says fear of man. But I want to prove here that when you see in the King James Version, all fear is not the same fear. So this is not the yare, reverence fear. This is the um, harada. But go, go, go through, my brother. Give thanks for I heard the first word right there. <laughs> yes, I. It says trembling <laughs> at men is a sneer, mm. but the one trusting in Jehovah will be protected. Mm. So you said a lot of these leaders and others are listening to. You know, fearing like different men and people. You know, and not able to do what is in their power to do. You know, the fear of man, the trembling, the anxiety of man. That's why it says in another place, it says, fret not thyself. <laughs> you know, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You know, because that's a sneer too. You know what I mean? You know, because you see the evil being done and you say, well, if they can get away with it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because once the righteous start to think that way, that's when Father going to say, what, they think me sleep? Huh? <laughs> Never sleep. You know? But it does say that Father would... Like you remember the, where it says where it says they say wake up or oh, or oh, oh, at the nine wake up Adoni wake up Lord you know why sleepest thou there's a psalm that says that because it would seem as though if one may dare speak that way that he's asleep 
You know what I mean? Because all these things are going on. And where's the judgment? You know what I mean? Where's the outrage? Where's the sensitivity to it? Like you said, that ones have become desensitized. A great analogy of they see it one moment, they they put an emoji, you know, they share some emojis and stuff, like a tear or a cry. I'm not saying that's wrong, but next moment something else gets their attention, you know what I mean? The comedy show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they don't think about that no more until they check their social media and see something else and they get sad again. You know? And then we already have a short attention span to begin with. Exactly, man. You know, that's what it talk about, you know, when it's about the mark of the beast. That's, you know, I didn't drop that video yet because I question whether the mark of the beast is just a device or if it's a state of mind. You know what I mean? You know, you get caged in that way of thinking. You know what I mean? And you can't really see, you know, that that's what's going to make a hotter judgment. You know, it's like when it says in Revelation, the sins, you know, have gone up to heaven. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like it's stacking up, you know what I mean? And it's getting to a point, you know what I mean, where there will be a response. But the longer it goes on without a response, why to the response? You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah. The longer it goes and there is no response, what happens when there is a response? You know what I mean? It's like right now, if you run up a debt and it's a small debt, it's like ten, twenty, thirty dollars. Still you may not you could use that elsewhere, but you could pay that off, not too bad. But now suppose they don't cut you off then, you know what I mean? It goes up to three hundred dollars, three thousand dollars. <laughs> three hundred you know what I'm saying? That debt, when debt, when they call in the, you know, call in that debt, you know, you know, so humanity's running up a debt, you know, a big debt. Mm -hmm. Very big debt they're running up, very, very big debt. And we, we too, that's why we have to be more outspoken. Cause what does it matter? You said the voice of inaction. Uh, you know that, that that an action, and it's a voice of justice that matters most. And how in action, he's, he's showing us that even the in action is what the theologians will call a sin. The theologian will say that's a, that's a sin. You know? You know, stand idly by the blood of yeah, your brother. You, study and you, see, you see injustice and you don't even speak, speak against the injustice when it's right in your face. So mm. you are almost basically condoning this injustice. If, if, if you see injustice, you got to speak up against the injustice. You just can't stay there and decide. Yeah, nice. The Khali. Yeah, man. That's how I'm looking at it. You know, you basically see complicity in anything, whatever is going on. There's something I'm looking for here. I, I had a quote there. See if I find it. All right. I thought it was in this phone. It's in the other phone. Based on what you just said right there, right in that scripture, I got uh, something from it. From it, um, I got my Majesty here. And this was uh, well, this was in a 1963 speech when it says uh, we must speak out on major world issues courageously, openly, and honestly. And in blunt terms of right and wrong, if we yield to um, blandishment or threats, if we compromise when no honorable compromise is possible, our influence will be sadly diminished and our prestige woefully prejudiced and weakened. Mm. Where is Imperial Majesty Harry Selassie, May 25th, 1963? Amen, amen. That's wow, perfect seal right there. Perfect seal there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I'm 
I'm also reproved by that word, you know, just to speak honestly and openly, you know, for real. Yes, sir. And I, I brought up on the still um, from an old video we call the Black Messiah, show the king with the crown, the color picture, and then from one of the Ethiopian iconography that was probably made maybe a hundred or more years before his majesty born, and it looked just like him. You know those pictures, those Ethiopian pictures? Yeah. That, that favor, you know, like his majesty, the, the, the Jesus Christos, Haile Selassie, you know, Christos pictures, you know what I mean? And that was called, I think, in um, Dr. Ben's book, The Black Messiah, how the Ethiopians had the Black Messiah, you know? And then you can see how the picture favor, you know, the king, you know? But the word sound, thank you for the word sound right there, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, when he was, when he was um, reading the scripture, I remember um, I had saved that in my, in my gallery this, um, this morning. Well, well, actually, this afternoon, late morning, this afternoon, I saved it in my gallery. And while he was reading that, I remember that. I said, hold on. You know, you know, my brother, I know that I collect some of them or, or come across them and, and archive them. Yeah, man, we need to kind of like, yeah, get 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 a, a collection. Maybe start with maybe five or ten of them, you know, and just focus some reasonments on that, you know, the words of His Majesty. You know what I mean? Cause that's like a living, the living scripture. You know what I mean? It affirms the scripture before, and it gives us like the right, the right now. You know what I mean? The right now word. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. The Rhema word. Yeah, you just put a, a, a like a, a, a bug in my ear, like, well, this went off in the head, but you're losing a lot on a personal level. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll pick up on that. But, yeah, man, we're going to we're gonna see you right here, man, on just the fear of, you know, the fear, the reverence of Yahweh, you know, the respect of Jehovah, you know, of the creator, you know, of the judge. He's the creator, but he's also the judge. He's going to judge what? I and I all have done with and in his creation, you know? It's done now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I beseech everyone that is listening and you can share with whoever they can share this with you. Um, don't be of the foolish and be one of those who say there is no God in their hearts, you know? Be, be one who has that fear and that reverence, that reverence of fear, you know, that fear of reverence for the most that, you know, and see to do good, you know, good for goodness sake, you know, we, you know, good over evil, you know, this is the, the, the you know, the path and the, the energy we have, you know, so we uh -huh. see a lot of the, the others who, the actions and the things they do prove that they have no fear for the Lord. So let's try not to be one of those people, you know, on a daily basis, you know, this is a, a thing that we have to do daily because, you know, the deceiver and his disciples are out there trying to pull you, you know, to be against the most High. you know, so look in the scriptures and even look at the story of Job, you know, which is my favorite story in the, in the book, you know, Job is a soldier of me, you know, so... Keep on the right, the right spot, you know. And we give thanks for the audience, give thanks for listening. And this is why we bring the reasoning because we see so much things going on in the world. It's like no fear for the Lord amongst you, like in the world, you know. So man fearing man and not fearing the Lord, you know. Repeat that again man fearing man and not fearing the Lord. This is why I see going on. So, Lots of fire, yes, sir. Yes, King. So, yes, I bless the item in the name of His Majesty, Xavier Karma, we highly salute you. I salute you when I should judge. Yeah. Yes, the Father. Father. Give thanks, my brother. Give thanks. Say, Amen, Amen, Yehun, Yehun. Yes, I let it be. Yes, I praise be the Majesty. Hallelujah. Rastafari. Yes, I give thanks, my brother. Yeah, man. Aye. Aye. Thanks for the reason, man.